Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and welcome to Planet Nine. Actually, what Planet Nine? It seems that it might not actually exist. Let's find out why, and welcome to What The Math. So about uh, the same time last year, I made a video about Planet Nine and I explained what we thought about it, why we thought it exists, and also uh, show you various simulations, including Universe Sandbox simulation, that basically defined our understanding of Planet Nine as a hypothetical planet orbiting far, far away from the Sun that is very likely uh, it causing various objects, specifically objects like Sedna right here, to have such eccentric and such unusual orbits. There's actually six such objects, uh, you can kind of see some of them here, that have these unusual orbits. And uh, because of these unusual objects, we thought that there's gotta be some kind of a planet out there that is causing them to have these um, peculiar orbital parameters. But very recently, uh, specifically in early 2017, there was a very, really, really actually cool um, citizen science project where 60,000 people were asked to sift through data and to try to discover Planet Nine in all of the various photos that we've taken of uh, nearby space, specifically outer solar system. And what we've discovered were four objects that may have been Planet Nine. But it turns out that one of those objects may actually cause Planet Nine to not exist. Okay, what do I mean by this? Well, all right, so let's let's just uh, start from scratch. I'm going to slow down the simulation here, and I'm going to actually place this object that we've discovered in an orbit where we think it, it, um, it actually is. And so here it is. This is a minor planet known as 2013 SY99. Uh, 2013 because we actually first took photos of this object in 2013, but it hasn't been identified until 2017. And this particular object has a diameter of approximately 250 kilometers. It's designated as a minor planet. And it's essentially a relatively small world. It's kind of hard to see it here, but it's, you know, it's dark, it's cold, contains mostly ice and rock, and um, has a peculiar orbit of um, basically something that looks like this. Now, it comes really, really far. It, uh, it actually goes to about 730 astronomical units away from the sun and comes as close as about 50 astronomical units. So in other words, its orbit it's, is somewhat similar to orbit of Sedna. But why can this object actually prove non-existence of Planet Nine? Well, it's because of its orbit, actually. This object would not exist if Planet Nine existed. Because of the way that its orbit is structured, if Planet Nine was around, it would very, very likely kick it out of the solar system. And the scientists studying this subject actually ran several simulations trying to see if um, 2013's SY99 would stay in the same orbit if Planet Nine had this predicted orbit that we think it has. And turns out that it doesn't. Every single time, it actually flies out and disappears. Now, in my simulation, it'll probably take a few hours of me running this for it to happen, but it's very likely going to happen. So, in other words, because we've discovered this object, Planet Nine is very likely not going to be, at least in this location. If it exists, it has to exist somewhere else, but it's definitely not going to exist where we think it might be located. So for now, we're going to say that it's non-existent. And because our previous estimation of Planet Nine's parameters were based on these other six objects, including Sedna and Ares, we think that um, because of this new finding, it's very likely that it's either not there at all, or it just simply is not an object that is in our solar system. All right, well, this brings me to my next question. So how can we then explain these very unusual orbits of Sedna, Ares, and all of these other objects, including, of course, this one, that have such an eccentric, such an unusual orbit that doesn't seem to fit with anything else in our solar system? And the explanation to this is actually, well, it's kind of simple. It's something known as diffusion. Basically, a random chaotic generation of orbits through uh, millions and billions of years. Let me show you this visually so you can kind of understand what's happening. 
Notice how all of these orbits are oscillating. They're actually actively changing. See how it's actually almost looks like it's breathing? Can you guess what's actually causing this? Well, it's these inner massive planets in our solar system. So things like Neptune, which I'm going to erase right now. Things like Uranus, which I'm going to also erase. And things like Saturn and, of course, Jupiter. So I've erased three. Let's see what happens when they erase the last gas giant, Jupiter. So here are those oscillations. And say goodbye to Jupiter. Boom. They stop instantly. So those oscillations, those changes in orbits, those so-called diffusions of orbits are always and constantly changed and caused by the very, very massive objects in our solar system, such as Jupiter, Neptune, Uranus, and Saturn. Once I place Jupiter back, you'll see that the oscillations will actually restart. So let's place Jupiter once again at a distance of about six astronomical units, and boom, look at that. They instantly restart. So, um, this kind of suggests that you don't really have to have Planet 9 to explain these unusual perturbations and unusual changes in orbits of various objects. The only object it doesn't actually explain very well is actually Sedna, because Sedna still doesn't come close enough to Neptune to be influenced by um, these perturbations. But honestly, I think through time, if you wait millions and millions of years, it's very likely still going to be affected by them as well, even though it is kind of farther away than other objects. So, like, for example, if I go back to removing all of the gas giants and um, ice giants, you'll notice that perturbations stop instantly. So this really is a major factor in changing these orbits. And to me, at least, indicates that, well, Planet 9 is not a necessary explanation anymore for explaining why uh, some of these really far, far objects like Sedna do have these unusual orbits. Now, why did we actually think that there was Planet 9 to begin with? Well, it was really because the previous six objects seemed to have this unusual pattern that um, were fit with another object influencing their orbit. But because of this new discovery, because of th uh, 2013 SY99, that doesn't really have a better name yet, but I propose the name Anton, just because, you know, why not? Anyway, because of this object, it's actually very likely that we now can almost certainly say that Planet 9 is just not out there at all. And, well, for now at least, we might actually be satisfied knowing that there is no new, uh, no other planet out there, only minor planets, only dwarf planets that we might discover in the next few years. But Planet 9 might not be a thing. And especially since we've actually already analyzed 90% of um, the sky and we've discovered nothing uh, size of Neptune and size of Planet 9, we can kind of assume that maybe, just maybe, it's just not out there. So all this excitement from the last year might have been for nothing. But you know what? It was still cool. It was still fun. But I guess for now, we can kind of forget about it and assume that these orbits changed for some other reasons. And anyway, so hopefully you learned something from this video, and hopefully now you know why we think Planet 9 may actually not exist. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to share this video with someone who enjoys watching various space videos, science videos, and wants to learn through video games. Before we finish this video, let's slow down time a little bit more, and maybe initiate a supernova in our solar system. Anyway, come back tomorrow to learn something else, something really, really cool, something that you didn't really know before. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye. And here comes the supernova that would technically never really happen in our solar system. But I still like doing these because it basically burns all of the planets and minor planets and leaves us with nothing. Anywho, see you later. Bye-bye.